We're back uh, looking at uh, antique engines today for inspiration on uh, some mechanical genius. And one of the things we're going to talk about today is uh, the governing of engines and how they're governed. Uh, as with any engine, it's very important that we use a governor. If we don't have a governor, the engine will continue its four-stroke cycle. Uh, and the four strokes being intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Uh, until the engine eventually explodes because there's nothing to keep it from from continuing those four cycles uh, accelerating these very heavy flywheels uh, until they just fly apart without a governor. Now the governor actually governs the speed and that's what we're looking at right here. This gear is driven off of another gear which is ultimately driven from the uh, from the crankshaft here. Uh, as the crankshaft turns this idler pulley in the center uh, which coincidentally is also the pulley which is running the exhaust valve on a lobe. Um, the exhaust valve lobe uh, is riding down in here as you can see and as this continues around that's actually what pushes the exhaust valve open and close. There's a hump on there. Now as we said about governors, uh, if we don't have a governor it'll continue to uh, make those four stroke cycle until the engine just flies apart. So as this engine's running the speed of these weights turning in a circular motion, uh, the centrifugal force pulls these weights out, which shoves a pin in the end of this hollow tube through the center of this shaft and pushes out on this rod. And as this rod is pushed out, there's a little catch here, which you can see. And that catch will go in line behind this catch and actually latch the exhaust valve open. So as this goes through its four-stroke cycle, it comes around and the exhaust valve gets pushed forward there and when the engine says hey I'm fast enough I'm up to speed and the way it, the way it tells it that is uh, the, the engine itself these fly out and it latches that latch in line and actually latches that exhaust valve open and in doing so that's what keeps those uh, the engine from actually running away until it flies apart now if I hold this latch in line with my with my thumb this engine will just roll and roll and roll because it can't get any compression. And the reason it can't get any compression is because I, by holding that latch on this rod, am holding the exhaust valve open here. And in holding this exhaust valve open, it can't get any compression, which means that when it comes back on its normal intake stroke, it, uh, it can't suck in any fuel because it doesn't have a vacuum. And without having a vacuum to suck in the fuel, it can't come forward on compression, ignite the fuel, make the power stroke, and continue to run. So that's why these engines are called hit and miss, because they'll hit, and then they'll take quite a while and they'll miss where they're going, they're panting. Uh, they're doing the bang. That's the miss whenever you hear them panting like that. Uh, that's the miss of the hit and miss. That's how a hit and miss governor works uh, with some different variations. Sometimes you'll find these weights will actually be located inside the flywheels and will move out inside the flywheel and will move a little collar uh, here, move a collar back and forth with a fork on it. And that fork on the collar will essentially do the same thing and will somehow latch that exhaust valve open. A lot of different hit and miss engines had the same basic design with flywheels, a cylinder, a cylinder head and valves, an ignition source, either a spark plug or a hot tube, which we'll talk about later, uh, a make and break igniter, which we'll also cover later. Uh, they had all these basic components, a fuel tank, so on, so on and so on, flywheels. Uh, but the big thing that made them all different was the governor. If you could have a different design in your governor, you could circumvent the patents that everyone had tried so hard to get in their initial design of the hit and miss engine. Now this engine being from 1926, it's not particularly rare, uh, but it's not particularly common either. One of the things that makes this engine slightly uncommon is the fact that it has a Wyco EK series magneto on an engine that is, uh, that is portable. This, this uh, magneto was really good on farm engines. Uh, this particular engine came off of a cement mixer, uh, hence the reason that the fuel tank is in the base and has our filler neck right here. Uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much the long and the short of governors, and that was uh, the big thing with the governors was to come up with a different design. That way you could beat the competition when it came time to apply for patents.